hi guys welcome back to my channel on today's video i am sharing with you guys a story on how and when i met my husband <laughs> Days ago, I posted on my Instagram and on my Facebook um, asking you guys to obviously um, ask me questions of, you know, that you wanted to know based on today's video. So I'm going to tell you a story how and when I met my husband and then I'll go through the questions that some of you guys sent me. They are in random order. So first, let's get to the story. So I met Sam in 2009 and it was i met him in a club so don't believe anyone who tells you that you can't meet like a husband or a wife in a club because that is not true and i'm um, proof for that um yeah so we met in a club and it was my birthday <laughs> believe me it was my birthday anyway so so when I met Sam, um, I didn't want to go out that day. Obviously, my sister was like, look, it's your birthday. You need to go out and you, we cannot not celebrate. And I was just not in the mood to tell you the truth. And, you know, I was turning 27 and I just thought, you know, I've heard parties throughout the, the years and I was going to have a big party that Saturday or like in a week's time. Um which was obviously after my birthday. So I thought I just don't see the point of going out. But my sister, Deb, if you're watching, <laughs> she really forced me out. She went into my wardrobe open and pulled this dress, which um, even when I look at the pictures and I'm thinking, did I really used to dress like that? It was one of the tiniest dresses I ever owned. And it had like a one shoulder sort of like dress and it was from Topshop. So... Um, she said, and we are going out and you're wearing this. So she just like threw it on the bed and she obviously chose the shoes as well. And we ended up going out and um, we went to a club called 21 in Cheltenham. Um, uh, went out for a drink. And from there, we went to another club. I'm going to try and remember the name of the club. This is so embarrassing because this is where I met 13, I think 13. Yeah. So we ended up going there and that night Sam was out with his friends, um, not friends, colleagues from work. And so, yeah, we, I ended up having a really good time. If I'm honest with you guys, I was having so much fun, but because I was wearing these skyscrapers, you know, I used to wear these six inch heels. Um, I was like, you know what? I think I'm, done dancing so i just kind of like went like outside the dance floor and deb was still dancing so i stood there and as i look across um obviously i was laughing by now because as soon as i moved away another guy went over to the dance floor and he was now dancing with my sister and no offense to white people but most of them can't dance and it was so funny what he was doing trying to copy what Deb was doing you know to make it look good and uh, so I was laughing at that as I look across the room um Sam was laughing at the same thing so I thought oh at least I'm not the only one who think he can't dance you know as in the case of white men can't dance so the next thing I see this guy has shuffled his way you know as the music is playing and the next thing he's standing next to me and so I said oh Oh, and um, he said something, and um, I think it, it was about his friend. So I looked at him, and I said, um, oh, I remember he said, oh, please do forgive my friend, you know, um, he's a bit drunk. So I said, so I looked at him, and I was like, oh, you speak good English. So he looked at me, and he said, what do you think, you know? So I then turned around, and I said to him, well, I thought you were an exchange student, you know, PA in, you know, like in Oxford, Cheltenham, coming to learn English, which it, it did offend him a little bit, you know, and I said, you know, I thought you were Japanese, and I didn't even know the difference then, you know, and he got even more offended, so we ended up chatting anyway, and I said to him, oh, it's my birthday, by the way, I was just, obviously, it came out in the conversation, 
I've never seen anybody so cold. You know, normally if it's your birthday, somebody will say, oh, happy birthday. Or he just said, oh, okay. You know, like in a very sort of like cold manner. Until later on, this is now after probably two years of dating. When I when he mentioned that the day he met me, when I said it was my birthday, um, he thought I wanted him to buy me a drink. I didn't realize that girls did that in clubs. So now I know that some girls will say, oh, it's my birthday. So a guy will buy him a drink. Anyway, so yeah, that's how I met him. And um, when the club finished, we actually went out. Um, we were waiting for a taxi and there were no taxis um, left. Uh, so, and these guys were pestering us, you know, me and my sister to forcing in a way to give us a lift. So I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna lose it so I think he saw what was happening as he was standing with his friends he came over he said everything okay I said no it's just these idiots you know they don't want to listen we've said thank you you know they've offered a lift but we don't want to go with strangers um he said oh we can um you can wait there with us you know or share a taxi if there's a taxi so I looked at it and I was like well don't think so I don't even know you so him and his friend then sort of like we find out the job that they do so we kind of like felt safe and we ended up walking with them and um there were no taxis left so he then got a phone call from one of his mates that actually there are taxis left on the other side of town so we ended up walking with him and his mate that was dancing with my sister and when we got there there was only one taxi left and we ended up sharing that taxi they decided to drop us first because we were nearby and um, in Cheltenham and he was going to Gloucester. And as we were coming out of the text, I said, oh, how much, uh, do, like asking the driver, how much was that? So he said, oh, don't worry about it. We'll sort it out. I always carry my uh, cards in, in the bag when I go out. So I took my card out and I was like, oh, just let me know how you get home. Um, and you know, I didn't think of anything about it. So he left and we went inside. We were a little bit drunk. So, um, you know, later on, he texted me to say, you know, um, he got him safe. So I invited him to my party, but he never came to my party. So, yeah. And then the rest is history, guys. And uh, that is how I met my hubby in a nightclub. Anyway. So now I'm going to add the questions that uh, people um, sort of ask me. So because I don't want this video to be too long and looking at the questions because there's so many of them, I might have to do a part two. So if you want me to do a part two, obviously, of this video and do the rest of the questions, just let me know in the comment section below and I will do that. But I've selected a few. So first question is, how old is your husband? um sam is four years older than me so i am this year i am 38 going to 39 so he's four years older than me which will make him about 42 going on 43 if my math is correct as long as that's four years yeah he is four years older than me and the other question is how long did you date it before getting married um we dated each other for two years and then we got married. It was such a serious sort of like relationship from the word go. Um, if I remember very well, within obviously six months, we've moved in together. That's about the same time that I met his family. And yeah, so it wasn't until two years later when we got married. Um, how did you know he was the one? Um, as I've said to you guys, the relationship was quite serious from day one even my sister after second third day of knowing sam like obviously spending time with me and sam um he she said to me you know what this guy is gonna marry you and i remember laughing because it was so funny the way she said it and i think also it came from a place where i was one of those girls who used to say i would never get married um i would never have kids and fast forward 10 years later, where I am, exactly. So the next question is, being in a mixed race marriage, are there any hardships? If so, 
If so, care to share? I think for this question, I would like to do a separate video if that's possible. But just to answer it, yes, we have hardships just like any other couple. And if you want more details, obviously, what kind of hardships and things like that, as I've said, I would like to do a separate video for this one. Um, was it love at first sight or did he grew on you? Okay, um, it wasn't love at first sight, I'll be honest with you, but I did kind of notice him. The first thing that I noticed as he was across the room was like um, how cute he was and... Um, I've never really been into like cute guys. Um, I like people's brains, like how they think. I like how they speak, like in terms of do they speak sense? Because you can find people that are 20, 30, but they behave like they 10, you know. So, um, but I did notice, oh my God, how cute he was. And the more I got to know him, the more I was like, you know what? I really like this guy and then the more I, time I spent with him and I was like I really really love this guy you know so it was more like he grew on me he's still growing on me every day and yeah that's about it uh who approached who first also the first kiss <laughs> um I'll probably say in terms of the conversation that we had in a club it was him who because obviously he moved from wherever he was across the room and came closer to me and he said something and then that's how we started talking. But in terms of the relationship, he did do the chasing, I'll be honest with you guys. It wasn't so much as chasing, but he was such a gentleman. He was, you know, he was the one saying, oh, we, you know, I want to take you out for dinner date. I want to, you know, and our first proper date um he cooked for me and that just for me personally that was it you know because um if i used to know how to cook i never i hated cooking and i remember at a time i used to have my friend fiona who is um in australia now uh, she used to come to my flat and and cook for me meals and then we'll put them in the freezer that's how lazy and terrible at cooking i was so then I meet this guy and he invites me for a date and I'm thinking we're going to a restaurant and he cooks and then he ends up cooking dinner for me. And not just any dinner, he cooked my favorite, favorite um, dish, which is tuna steak. And the way he did it, I don't like it if it's frozen. So he made a joke that it was frozen, even though I didn't know how to cook. I, I hate frozen food. So, and he cooked it so perfect. And for me, that was just it. I was like, okay, okay, I'm sold. Um, also, the first kiss. <laughs> well, um, what can I say about the first kiss? You know, everybody's first kiss. I didn't see any stars or any moons or anything like that. Obviously, if you knew you're still dating and it's new, you, you are nervous because obviously you don't know that person very well. But one thing I will say though, is after that first kiss, I did wish, you know, that there could be more of those kisses. So it kind of like sealed the decision for me. And I was like, I really, really want to be with this guy. I hope that answers your question um what was your first impression of him i think i've already covered that one at the beginning that the first thing that i noticed was um obviously how he looked he really looked um yeah he looked hot that that the day i met him or oh, he looked really cute whether it was the haircut i don't know but there was something about him you know broad shoulders and the funny thing is my husband's tall and I've never been into tall guys because obviously I'm short and he's I mean he's too tall for a Chinese man normally Chinese men are quite short so um it I don't know if it was that you know you, you see this guy big shoulders and you know dark um tall and handsome they say I think maybe that was the case for me I don't know but yes I I kind of like I, I took one look at him and when he was next to me normally in a club if somebody tries that I'll be like do you mind but I I didn't like I wasn't rude or anything like that so yeah what makes your relationship work since you from different cultures um probably his answer will be obviously different first of all we don't see ourselves as from being different cultures yes we are from different cultures 
we see ourselves as non do and sam or mom and dad to our kids because the minute you start like noticing such things then it it, it could be a problem you already have enough of that with the people sort of like picking up on that that oh he's chinese oh you're black you know and that kind of a thing so we we just see each other as us and for me um the respect that he gives me you know the love that he gives me the small things like he does every day for me he doesn't have to wait for valentine's day to buy me flowers or to cook me a nice meal or to do something nice basically excuse me basically i will come back home tired and he'll be like there's dinner in the fridge for you um he will wash dishes without him expecting me i'm the wife so i must wash the dishes um we communicate um as much he's a very sort of like quiet guy compared to me but if I've got something that I need to say to him, I'll say it. If he's got something to say to me, I'll say it. And we try. We've never really had a serious, serious fight that I've like, I'm calling your mom or now he's calling my my family in South Africa. We just try and talk about whatever the issue is and and then just leave it. I'm one of those people, if I have to shout at him at a time, I would do it there and there and then it's done because I don't want to be in a position where our marriage now, we have to sort of like talk about something that happened last week. That That's how the problem starts in a marriage. So personally, I deal with whatever the issue is there and there and then it's done and it's dusted. You're not going to hear me or you're not going to hear him saying, oh, last week you did this or last month you did that. So that what helps our relationship. How did he propose? This is a very funny one. Um, So I remember it like it was yesterday. So Sam took me to London to watch The Lion King, the show um, at the West End. So we went to dinner and it wasn't so much as him getting on one knee that day, but we, yeah, we were eating dinner and it was more of a conversation. He was looking at me and he mentioned something, or oh, should we get married? And so I looked at him and we spoke about it. There was no ring at a time. So we went and so I ended up saying, so we engaged then, <laughs> you know, and he turned around and he said, well, I suppose so. So I must get you a ring. So we kind of like laughed about it. And we went, we saw the show and then we stayed another day in London. And then we came back home that night after the show. It was the 31st of March. I text and I um, rang a few people. Not, not, no, I text. I didn't ring anyone. I text and I Facebook a few people to say oh by the way this has happened i'm engaged me and sam you know sam has asked me to marry him and we are getting married and normally if you send something like that people will obviously text you back or oh, congratulation so first of all i thought oh it's a bit late because by the time we got back to the hotel obviously i'm excited now it's like just after midnight because we watched the last show um so and then I woke up in the morning, there's nothing on my phone, like saying, oh, congratulations or anything like that. And I realized that um, actually it was the 1st of April. So everybody that knew me well, that was close to me that I text, they all thought it was an April Fool's you know, joke. Because obviously growing up, as I've mentioned before, I never really wanted to get married or to have kids or anything like that. So... I got so upset, like, no, I wouldn't even say upset. I got so angry that I rang most of my family members and my close friend. I said, I can't believe how jealous you guys are, how, you know, you don't even like send a congratulations and something like that. And everybody was like, we thought you were joking. And then I realized, obviously, it's the first. And so after that, obviously, people started sending um messages of congratulations and then a few weeks later obviously i had to wait sam got me a ring um and the day he got it we were going out for dinner so he said oh have you seen my keys and i said oh they were in the in the dining room so i went not in the dining room in the lounge 
So I went to the lounge to get, he said, oh, can you grab them? So I went to get the keys. As I was turning around, obviously, to go towards the door, there he was, as I'm turning around and he's on his knee and with this ring. I'm sorry, but it was, I told him later, it was one of the cheesiest moments of my life maybe i'm not that girl that is romantic in that way you know people say oh i cried or whatever for me i thought if this is how all the men do it like not necessarily do it but for me it was a bit like oh my god i wanted to say just stand up because i've already said yes but because that's how i am i'm not one of those sort of like oh put flowers and do this no um and for him to turn around and do something like that, I was like, mm. but anyway, I said yes, and I put on the ring, and yeah, we went out to dinner, and then I obviously, because I had a ring by then, I took pictures, and I sent it to all my friends and my family, and yeah, that was it. That ring, actually, the diamond got out, I think it was eaten by a dog, but that's another story for another day. Um when did you guys get married um this is a very good question i must say because it is a very confusing question um a very confusing thing for a lot of people that have followed me for years now and those who know me so we actually got married in july of 2011 uh, we had um four weddings all together so the first one was july um 2011 as i've said and it was in a registry it was just me him and his mom and my sister-in-law his sister if it was up to me it would have just been me and him but obviously you need witnesses so i was like okay your mom you will do and obviously the sister and then later on we met up with other aunties had lunch and then i think the following day, I had a group of friends meeting us up and we had dinner, like obviously with my friends, because obviously none of my family in South Africa could be there. But I did have my family who were based in Manchester at a time, like Deb and Abu Ngazi and, um, and obviously Kolani. So they all came down for lunch. And then the second... Um, celebration because we were officially married at the registry in july we had a chinese banquet in october of 2011 um i think we had about 220 guests if i'm not mistaken and out of that 220 guests i probably knew 30 and um it was the first time that i experienced how the Chinese culture is so similar to my culture in terms of celebrating weddings, you know, with our black people's culture, with the wedding, you go to the caterers and you said, cook, you don't tell them the numbers because later on, on the pictures, you're going to see your aunt, your cousin and five other people. You don't even know who they are, but obviously um, we ended up really having a, amazing amazing um day and my mother-in-law got me a chinese dress which i still got it now a red dress which was made in hong kong it was beautiful it fitted me to the t because obviously i gave her my measurements from um my wedding the lady was making my wedding dress my white wedding dress and then the following year which was 2012 then we went to south africa because it is weddings are so expensive and unfortunately you know i couldn't have everyone from south africa flying over so it was only fair that then we go to south africa and celebrate with my family there um and so on a friday we had a um a sit down dinner i think about 120 people at the oyster box um in durban love that place um and then the following day on a saturday we did something at home um you know traditional stuff and yeah that was yeah one man four weddings and it was amazing i really had a great time i enjoyed all four of them and next question how did you meet each other's family? Um, well, the first time Sam met my family was 2010 during the World Cup in South Africa. I wasn't planning to go, but we ended up going anyway. 
And at a time I said to him, don't, you know, mention you're my boyfriend, try and be, you know, <laughs> um, it wasn't because I couldn't date or anything like that. It was more so for respect for my elderlies, because obviously there was a group of us traveling and we were going to stay with my family at like one of the weeks because we did Joburg, Cape Town and obviously um, um, Joburg, Cape Town and Durban. So I said to them, if we stay in Durban, we can stay with my family. And so you can experience what it's like, you know, for like, you know, experience the real South African experience in a township and stuff like that. So few months later i kind of like i didn't get away with it because they knew that obviously he was my boyfriend so that was the first time he met them we were still boyfriend and girlfriend um for me i met his family it was six months into our relationship and he took me home for christmas and yeah i was a bit nervous but you know what uh my family and sam's family are like so we kind of like brought the same way we don't see color we don't see those sorts of things so it was like sam's girlfriend and that's about it and his mom did buy me <laughs> uh, this woman's the first time she's met me she sent pictures of me but she bought me a dkny bag which i still use to this day and that's how i knew me and my mother-in-law we're gonna be like this to this day we get along amazingly we, you know she's the best mother-in-law i could ask for uh, I'm going to do one last question now, guys, because I can see this video is going to get long. And as I've said, if you want me to do the rest of the other questions, do um, obviously put uh, in comments. Let me know. Um, the last question that I am going to do is, did Sam pay Lobola for you? I get this question all the time, guys. And as a Zulu girl, I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to say this. Our culture is so greedy um, that if you were to ask any girl that's a Zulu girl that's married to somebody outside of their culture, they're going to tell you that that guy have paid Lobola for, um, for her. So anyway, just to answer the question, there was some sort of Lobola that was paid. But for me, I had to be very strict with my family. I had to make a judgment call because at the end of the day, this is your life. Um, you don't want to start your life like in debt and something like that. An easy decision for me. I asked Sam to obviously do something or to pay um, something towards obviously my mom and my dad, specifically for those two. And I did do a specific cultural thing for obviously when a girl gets married in the culture there are certain things that get done it was a little bit tricky obviously sam being chinese and me being zulu i grew up in a home that practices zulu culture i knew that there are certain things that i need to do things like for an example when your ancestors are being told that you no longer a nombela which is my maiden name and now i'm a lee for me personally, it was important that that was done. I had a, a very long conversation with my um, family how we were going to do that because I didn't want to do the rest of the other things because obviously Sam doesn't practice in Zulu culture. And in terms of his family, I didn't have to do any cultural things that were Chinese because obviously yes sam is chinese but he was brought up in an english way because obviously he was born in the uk so that was straightforward so i didn't want to bombard him with all this cultural stuff which is not going to make sense as stuff goes on and also you know with the cultural things especially zulu things once you open that can of worms you got to be able to keep up with it. So we found a way um, with my family that worked for both parties. And he did go and choose the cows <laughs> and the goats that he was going to obviously present to my family. Yes, it was a, a moving cow and moving goats. Um, it wasn't cash as in 
cash um so if you want me to do a separate video about that do let me know again on the comment below and i will do so um yeah so just looking at obviously the time now on this video um with the edit editing it's still gonna be too long so i'm gonna end this video here and i hope it has answered at least some of the questions that you guys had um, if you want me to do a part two, do let me know. But either than that, I will see you guys on my next video, which is going to be next Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>